baptism is just a symbol, right? I mean, it symbolizes a relationship that we have with Christ, but it doesn't actually connect us to Christ and the gifts of his sacrifice, right? Perhaps you've heard that question before, and there are all sorts of scripture passages about baptism that'll tell you exactly what it is that God has done for you through baptism. But one of the texts that I really love is 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. Now, I'm going to give you a moment to grab your Bibles because you're going to want to read this along with me. So uh, press pause and go grab your Bible. All right. Are you back? Okay. So uh, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21, Peter writes, Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you. There you go right there. Baptism now saves you. But what's this corresponds to this? Business? What's that all about? Some texts even use the word which symbolizes baptism. What symbolizes baptism? The flood. Look, look at 1 Peter chapter 3 in those verses preceding uh, the text I just read. And you'll see that Peter is talking about the flood. Water. A way in which God used water in the Old Testament to save people. That was a symbol or a type or a foreshadowing of the water of holy baptism. So just as God saved Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, so too, he saves you through the waters of holy baptism. And then Peter goes on to say, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So what does this mean? A good conscience. So if we need to stand before God based upon our own merit, if we need to stand before God based upon our own efforts, we would not be standing before him with a good conscience. I mean, can you imagine walking into a room where you know there is someone there who you have offended greatly? Are you going to approach that person with, with confidence? Are you going to approach that person with a good conscience? Or are you going to maybe not make eye contact with that person? Or you're going to avoid that person? Or are you going to hope that person doesn't notice you? Well, what about when you stand before God? Is there any offense that you've committed against God that has that is hidden from him, that he cannot see, that he doesn't know about? He knows about everything. There is no reason for you to stand before God in good conscience unless your sins have been cleansed, unless Christ has saved you and he has wiped the slate clean and he has redeemed you sanctified you and made you acceptable to God because of his righteousness. And then you can stand before God in good conscience because you recognize there's nothing standing in between me and you, God, not because of anything I've done, but because of everything that Christ has done, because he has brought me the gift of salvation through the means of holy baptism.